Hello, in this video we're going to be taking a look at a question debrief where we effectively go through an exam style question and show you how to answer it. Now the topic in this case is the statement of cash flows, it's a topic that comes up in multiple exams but more importantly we're going to be looking at using a particular technique using T accounts to find a missing balance and that's a technique that will come up in numerous exams outside of the topic of cash flow so it's a useful thing for you to understand uh, how to apply in exam style questions so let's take a look at the question at the bottom we have the requirement which of the following statements is correct select three that apply so we're looking for three of the statements on the right hand side so let's have a look at what we're finding so we have a and B both relate to cash payments for the purchase of non-current assets. So we need to do some calculations to find cash payments for the purchase of non-current assets. C and D relate to cash flows from the disposal of non-current assets. So we need to figure out how the, well the cash flows from this disposal. And then E, F and G all relate to the net cash flows from investing activities. And remember with net we are of course having the cash inflows, deducting the cash outflows, and that gives us the net cash flows. So what we need to do then is use the T account approach for finding cash flows. And what account is it that we're going to need? Well, looking at this information, we're talking about the purchase of non-current assets and disposal of non-current assets and investing activities. We are going to be dealing with the non-current asset account. Okay, so we've drawn the T account for our non-current assets. What we're looking for, first of all, is the cash payments for the purchase of non-current assets. So what we're going to do is put in all of this information where relevant into this T account and the balancing figure is going to be the cash payments. So let's start with the easy stuff and we'll go one at a time. So the following extracts are for Asta. We have figures from 2016. There will be the brought forward amounts. 2017 will be the carry forward amounts. And we'll start then with tangible assets. So we have tangible assets brought forward, tangible assets carried forward here. So let's just pop those in. Non-current asset account, of course, is an asset account. So the brought forward balance will be debit. Brought forward of 716,000. Carried forward was 850,000 dollars okay good starting place and that is those two dealt with next we have the revaluation reserve now what we need to do with this is figure out how much it increased because what does a revaluation reserve tell us well it tells us that during the year we had non-current assets revalued and they either went up or down well we can see in this case that it went up from one hundred eighty-four thousand dollars to two hundred and twelve thousand dollars so we have an increase in the revaluation reserve twenty eight thousand dollars okay that's how much it increased now that would have involved a credit entry to the revaluation reserve so we would have credit revaluation reserve so we would debit with the revaluation non-current assets twenty eight thousand dollars okay so that's revaluation reserve dealt with Let's move on to depreciation. Now, typically, you wouldn't put depreciation directly into the non-current assets account. We have the accumulated depreciation account, and we have that as a contra account, and the two together give us a carry value. But in this case, this is a technique for finding cash flows. So we do want to put depreciation charges in here, because if we didn't, we wouldn't be accounting for the decrease in value of non-current assets related to depreciation. So, of course, depreciation would be a credit entry decreasing the value of non-current assets by $42,000. Okay, that's depreciation dealt with. Interest received. Well, interest received wouldn't be an entry in non-current assets. It's not put in here at all. You don't receive interest and post it to non-current assets. It's a kind of income. So we'll come back to that. Loss on disposal of non-current assets, 22,000. So this is a loss. But again, this isn't telling us by how much non-current assets decreased. 
this is telling us how much we lost on the sale of non-current assets. So again, this has no this has no entry into the non-current assets account. So we'll come back to this when it's more relevant. What is relevant is the line underneath saying that the company disposed of intangible assets during the year that had a net book value of $89,000. So that means non-current assets in the year decreased by this amount because that's what was disposed of. So we disposed of $89,000 worth of non-current assets. So disposal is $89,000 on the credit side because we're reducing non-current assets. So that is that dealt with as well. So that's all the information we've been given. So there's nothing else to put in our non-current asset account. So at this stage, we can total up each side. And in this case, the credit side has the greater number and that comes to $981,000. Okay, we put that on the other side as well, $981,000. And that means the balance will be on the debit side, which means that we made purchases by increasing the value of non-current assets. So the balance we're finding is cash purchases, or cash payments for non-current assets. And the balancing figure in this case is $237,000. So that should give us the answer between A and B. It's not A, that's the wrong number. 237 means B is correct. So that's the first part of this question answered. Okay, next is to find the cash flows from disposal of non-current assets assets. So we need to go back to this information. So we made a loss on disposal of $22,000. So that's the loss we made. That's how much we would have after the equal sign. Okay. So a loss of $22,000. Okay. So in order to make a loss, what is the sum we're doing here? Well, we'd have the proceeds that we received from the sale or the disposal of the non-current assets and we deduct the net book value of the non-current assets which was $89,000. So we would have $89,000 and that would be deducted. So what figure do we need to have here as our sale proceeds, the proceeds from disposal minus 89,000 gives us 22. Well the answer is 67,000. This is how much we were paid for the non-current assets. This is how much we had them written down as, as their net book value, which led to a loss of 22,000. So that's the loss we made, but the cash flows from the disposal is actually this $67,000 number. So the correct answer is 67,000. Dollars. Uh, I noticed there's actually a pound sign there. That's obviously a mistake in the question. Ignore that. That should be dollars, uh, which means D is false. Okay, so D is not the correct answer. There was not an outflow of $22,000, which leaves us finally at finding the answer between E, F, and G, which is the net cash flows. So I'll just give us a bit more white space on the screen. Okay, so we're going to calculate the net cash flows by starting with the cash inflows. And what were the cash inflows from investing activities in this case? Well, we know we had cash inflows related to the disposal that we just figured out. We had $67,000 come in from disposal of non-current assets. We also had interest received of $12,000. That's an investing activity. So we must add that on too. So those are the cash inflows relating to investing activities. We deduct the cash outflows next. And they were the purchases or the payments on non-current assets, which we've calculated to be $237,000. So once we deduct that, we will end up with our net cash flows from investing activities of minus
dollars. So an overall cash outflow of $158,000, which means F is our correct answer. E and G are incorrect. Okay, so that was a question debrief. And if you found that useful, then you may want to check out the 100 question debriefs we've been doing for each of the SEMA papers. So this one was from F1 and there are 99 more where that came from. So if you found that useful, do go and check those out. So if you found that video useful, we have many more videos like that one on our YouTube channel. So give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want access to more of that content. We are also around in other places on social media. We have an Instagram page. We are available on Twitter and we have a number of Facebook groups related to which particular level you are at. So if you're an operational student, have a look for our operational group where you'll find useful content there. And of course, you can find us at our website, www.astranti.com, where you can get access to many free materials.